If you have your Bibles with you, please open it to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 40. We're going to meditate on the uh, verse that we have selected to be the verse for our 90th celebration. And what an opportunity for me this morning to meditate, to study, to ponder upon, and let me share with you some of the things that the Lord has impressed upon my heart. Let us all stand, please, as we read, starting on verse 28 up to verse 31. Isaiah 40, starting in verse 28 up to verse 31. Ready? Begin. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Heavenly Father, exalt yourself in our midst today. Nothing would ever distract us than the God who have shown us that in waiting, in hoping, in trusting, we may find strength in you alone. May the Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. Lord, this is your time. May indeed that you will be worshipped and praised today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. What a privilege for me to have all this speakers, and all the people who had been expounding the Word of God, especially on the things that we have considered to be our themed verse for our 90th anniversary. What do you expect on a 90-year-old? So probably this is a fitting verse for those who had been looking at that after many years of serving God, indeed we realize that the strength is not on us as far as being young people are concerned. And yet the Lord has promised that the strength will be on him. And they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Will there be a strength? Will there be joy? Will there be fervor? Will there be excitement at the age 90? It's not about us. It's not about what we can do. It's about what God would bestow upon us that indeed the strength would be from him. We're going to soar great heights for the sake and for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. I was not one of those who crafted the theme for our 90th, but many of you would realize right away how would the Lord Jesus Christ come in in the 40th chapter of the book of Isaiah? There is nothing unbiblical. But if we're going to take the context, are we violating something that we are putting into words that is not really being stated here in the book of Isaiah? Is Jesus Christ the center? Of course, Jehovah God, the way that he had showed himself to the Old Testament people. And yet, our theme is we are going to soar our great heights for His glory, for the name, for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want us to just survey a little bit about what was the book of Isaiah was talking about and where chapter 40 would fall on his discussion. Isaiah is called the Prince of the Prophets. He would be the one that would exalt especially we Christians who have already the New Testament, the Gospels, especially the account of the Lord Jesus Christ going into the cross. He, he is the one that would give us the 53rd chapter, the suffering servant. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. If you look at him, there is no beauty that you would desire him. Talking about the time when he, Jesus was already hanging on the cross, 
that people could not even gaze at him. That is not the form of a man. That is not a form of a person. That is a piece of meat being hanged on the cross. How they have battered his body. How they have disfigured his face. You could not recognize him. And yet at 12 o'clock up to 3 o'clock, the world turned into darkness. Nobody saw when Jesus was offering himself to be the lamp of God to take away the sin of the world. Isaiah saw it. He was bruised for our transgression. It pleased God to bruise him. No human eye could ever gaze what was happening between the transaction of the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet, the prophet Isaiah had seen in his vision that this is the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Chapter 1 to chapter 39 talks about the judgment. Isaiah lived in the day when Israel was prosperous. But then all of a sudden, both the northern and the southern kingdom, they were enjoying their time together in the world. Even to the point of already touching sin and the world to enjoy. And all of a sudden, Isaiah came and said, No, 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 you are called by God. You could never do that or else the judgment of God would fall upon you. Yes, it fell on Israel. They were taken by the Assyrians. And now the focus of his ministry is the nation of Judah. The same thing that had happened in Israel will happen to you if you would not repent. Chapter 1 to chapter 39. And then all of a sudden, he started to predict 70 years. And then after 70 years, you will come back. This is the start of chapter 40. So if you want to have a very simple uh, outline in the book of Isaiah, chapter 1 to chapter 39, condemnation. Chapter 40 up to chapter 66, comfort, consolation. Now look at how Isaiah would present the new section of his book on chapter 40. Look at verse 1. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her, for her warfare is accomplished and her iniquity is pardoned. For she hath received the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted or be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough places plain and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all the flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Sounds familiar? These verses have been coded. Coded in the New Testament. These had been coded when Jesus was about to come. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Every valley shall be filled. All the mountains will be straightened out. Talking about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not out of context. When we have used this passage to the greater heights for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because first of all, the comfort that only, would only come to God's people. It's not only that they will return after 70 years. But God is going to give us His Son to, recon uh, to reconcile us to Himself. One, chapter 1 to 39, condemnation. What is God doing? Is He going to condone sin in chapter 40? Because we realize that the comfort, the pardon, the forgiveness is being offered. I don't have to offer sacrifice. I don't have to pay it myself. God is the author of this pardon and forgiveness. But then our New Testament theology would tell us, and he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. All of a sudden, the anger of God, instead of looking at me, wretched, wicked, vile. As our young people would 
express it. Ew! You are so dirty. He looked at his son. He poured his judgment on him. So that he, he could look at me and offer me pardon, forgiveness, comfort. What a wonderful book. I don't know if he ended up in, in, in chapter 39. Who would ever appreciate this God who is fierce and holy, untouchable, filled with fury against sin? And yet when we open chapter 40, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. It's not about me. It's not about my sacrifice. It's not about my good life. It's about your son hanging on the cross for my sake. I found comfort. I found forgiveness. I believe 90 years ago, when the very first gospel had been preached to Iloilo, this was the gospel that our grandparents heard. Are you tired of sin? There is comfort in Jesus. You want to get rid of the slavery in your life? Come to Jesus. Unhappiness. You don't know where to go. You're dissatisfied with his life. There is longing that nobody, no ever could fill it up. Come to Jesus. Thank God 90 years later, this is still the same message that we deliver to people. This may be now a different age, different warfare, different way of presenting the gospel to the young people who are now looking at the world as if they're going to be swallowed up by the world. But this is still the same story. You know, after many months of working and hearing and uh, sharing the gospel to the drug addicts, I think after all the hype, after all the, the excitement, we are in this ministry, we would help them. Now, there's only one message. Whatever rehab, whatever program, whatever you're going to give them, at the end of the day, it's still the Lord Jesus Christ that could free them from the slavery of sin. Yes, 90 years ago, the same message was delivered in Iloilo. This is the same message that we are delivering today. I could never run away from the wrath of God. I could never take refuge in His anger. Sin will be judged. God is upset and is so angry and wrathful against sin. But I have to run to the cross. Jesus, keep me safe in your blood. There is comfort in the Lord Jesus Christ. So here we find that the message, the second message of Isaiah to God's people, starting in chapter 40, we realize that indeed comfort and consolation comes from the Lord in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the still same message that we deliver today. And thank God that for those of you, especially who are already older, and you realize what is the new gimmick? What is the new strategy? What are we offering to these people? What are we offering to the world? What we want to give to the people in Iloilo? We have all the challenges. We have all this that probably nobody could ever face this battle again. They are so great and overwhelming. There is comfort. Jesus is the answer. In the Old Testament, he was the prophesied son of God who is going to bring on verse 5, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord have spoken it. Now we look back, the very same Jesus, who was the hope, who was the joy, who was the desire of all nations that people were expecting that one day will come and heal the nations. He is here today. And he is the same message, the same comfort, the same consolation that we could give them. But the second thing I want us to see in this passage. Now Isaiah was prophesying before 
Judah will be taken over or will be take, taken captive by the Babylonians. But the northern kingdom, Israel, had already been swallowed up by Assyria. But God is going to give comfort so that people will not be tired, will not give up. Look at how the people will speak against God in verse 27. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? God, you don't know what I'm suffering. God, you don't know my pains. You don't know my tears. God, you don't know all the things that is happening in my life. As if God, I know that you're holy God. You pronounce judgment and we're hurt. We are thrown into our enemies for 70 years. God, what is that to you? So Israel and Jacob, they were talking back to God. Okay, okay, we deserve it. But how about our kids? Who will be born in captivity? How about the grandkids that will be born in captivity? Will they know you as our God? Merciful. Now, there is only one way that God is going to give justice to everything that is going on. He offered His only Son. He's not going to condone sin. He's going to conquer sin forever by giving His Son. God, do you care? God, I know I failed you. God, I know I'm not even worthy of the least of your mercies. But will there still be a privilege to come home? Now, 90 years, 90 years. You know, sometimes we talk about people. We talk about kids who grew up here. We talk about our young people who were here before. And all of a sudden, we could see them on the streets. We could meet them somewhere. Sometimes there's only one thing that they keep talking about. I'm too dirty to go back to Don. I think that kind of statement is really one step coming back to God. But you know, sometimes human nature and the devil himself would try to. Why are you not in Don today? Why are you not coming back to our church? Please come. Judgmental. You fell into sin. You need help. And you are pushing away the very people that could help you. And the God who could ever give comfort and freedom. What are you doing? Yes, 90 years later, we still have the same message. The comfort, the pardon is from God. And yet we realize That what is very true of what happened in Israel is also very true today. That God places them in the area of need or weakness to find Him as their only strength. God places people in Assyria and in Babylon. They were helpless. And while they were helpless, God is telling them, wait upon me. I will renew your strength. Where are you right now in your relationship with God? I think you heard of our story one time when we were having our, we were having our camp with our young people. We really prayed hard. We know that some of our young people, they need to make some, they need to, to take the right turn going back to God. So we tried to understand them and we tried to give them the privilege if this is the turn that you need to make, we want to help you. Vices, slavery of sin, we offer them Jesus, come back. Relationships with an unbelieving boyfriend or girlfriend, give it up, come back to God. So we examined many of the things that our young people had, had problems. And at the end of the camp, we offer them the privilege to decide, to decide for God. 
I don't know, 20 minutes of altar call? 30 minutes? It took us so long. What is your need? Jesus is the answer. Almost everyone stood up. Everyone, we had, we had counselors waiting. Come to our counselors. You need prayer. You need advice. Come, come, come. Almost everyone stood up except one at the back. She was that there crying and crying and crying. Almost everyone. We waited for five minutes. We waited for ten minutes, but then she would not move. She was just there at the back. Until finally, we closed in prayer, but I told one of the counselors, go to that young person. Deal with her. I don't know what's keeping her. Later on, I've known that why she was crying at the back because she was saying, I did this before. I did this in Cassie Conference. I did this in camp, but I failed God. I'm too ashamed to come forward and fail God again. No strength. Wait on the Lord. This message is for those captives who will be going for 70 years away from home. They will be helpless. They will be weak. They will be, they will be oppressed. They will be persecuted. But God said, wait on me. Wait on me. Don't give up. I'll give you the strength. I don't know, probably many of us, we're not really that hard. But you know, sometimes the problem is we're just so tired of sin. We're just so tired of failing. We are just so tired of ourselves. Amo man nagihapon. Mapalpak man ko nagihapon. Kahuluya lang na sa ginoo. This is the message for us. Look at yourself now. I am in the place of need so that God could overwhelm me with His strength and power. I have to wait on the Lord. Now, I want to even push this farther that sometimes it is God's design as far as our weakness is concerned so that we would realize that our strength is in God alone. Let me give you an example. If you would open your Bibles in the book of the Second Corinthians, the Apostle Paul, a greatly use of God in bringing the gospel to the Gentiles, in chapter 12, verse 7, he was talking about the thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet him. On verse 8, he said, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. But he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I would rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. I hate weakness. I hate illness. I hate being sick, feeling sick. But then this verse would tell me, this is designed by God. Wisen up, grow up, see the hand of God. He wanted you to be there. Because in the place of weakness, then I am your strength. I decided. Or else you would be so cocky. Or else you would be so proud. I can do it now with my own strength. God designed the place of weakness. So that in that time I would say, God, you are my strength. Wow, it's so wonderful to think of. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. But I don't know how many considered us. God, I allowed you to banish me into this problem. Seventy years. It's so good to think of deliverance. But the slavery that we found ourselves in, God, I don't want this. 
the messenger of Satan who buffeted Paul, I asked God three times, who would like that? That somebody is just hitting you all the time, hitting you. God, you're not answering my prayers. God, this is so uncomfortable. God, I want to get out of this. And I think some of our expression would be something like this. Why me? Why us? Why our family? And then we push it a little bit as if sungud sungud. Palanggap mo magid kami ginoo. Ngagin amo mo kami niman. But have you seen that verse that God decided so that in times of our weakness, in times when we are helpless, then God could pour out His strength on us. God, it's all, it's all about you. It's not about me anymore. Now, I know that many of us, on the third thing that I want to share from this passage, we are pushed into consideration of the examples that God has given in chapter 40. Look at, look at verses, uh, verse 30. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. The third thing I see in this passage is that he is not governed by natural processes. When we talk about spiritual strength, it does not depend only on the young. When I was meditating on this passage, yes, I could recall, I could remember that even though it's already late at night, and then you have to wake up the next morning, all you have to do is just to shake yourself in the morning with the alarm clock and then go! But then the time comes when you don't have enough sleep, when you wake up, you don't know if the world is. Ano nga daw gabala lintong out. Tulok mo ang tanan, they're okay. Ikaw yan, nambal ka naman, nagalinog. Ikaw lang galisa galinog. But then the example is being stated that sometimes the youth will rely on their strength and their strength may fail. But God is not governed by the natural things that we see in life. And how many of us, if you look back, and probably some already advanced in age, and yet you would say, yes, I was young, even now I'm old, but my faith is stronger than ever before. Lord, you renewed my faith every single day. I have tested you all these years. I would never let go of a God who remained faithful. God, I'm here. I'm standing on my ground until you fill me up with your strength and your grace. But then lastly, look at the condition that is given here on, on verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. If you had been banished by God for 70 years. I don't know on the 10th year. I don't know on the 20th year. I don't know on the 30th year when the young people would come, what had happened to us. It's good to listen about our kingdom with David. It's good to listen about our temple with Solomon. But look at us now. Look at us. We are slaves. We are conquered people. It keeps ringing back to their ears the words of Isaiah before they left Jerusalem. They that wait upon the Lord, my son, just wait on the Lord. Just wait. He will renew our strength. Now in some translation, it says their hope. The book of Hebrews would give us the definition of biblical hope. Having faith. That the thing that we hope for, it's already in us, with us. We are certain of the things that we hope for. So the elements of the waiting, number one, is trusting. I don't know how many of us have experienced that we just waited and waited and waited, but we could not really trust the one who told us to wait on us. 
wait for me. But uh, I don't know. I don't know if I could really trust your word. But here God is saying, wait. Now, very interesting because also in the book of Isaiah, years and years, even before a certain man by the name of Cyrus will be born, he already said, there will be a king that will consolidate the kingdoms of what we call today the modern Iran and Iraq, Middle Persia Empire. And he will, after 70 years, let my people go home. Now, some colors would look at the book of Isaiah and say, what's he talking about? I think this is already a different writer. How could Isaiah ever really say the very name of the king that God would use so that his people will go back? God's people needed this. Or else they will be weary. God's people wanted the assurance. And God had given them even a proper name, the name of the king that would allow them to go back just to assure them, wait on me, trust on me. I can do it. I promise you, I'll do it for you. But also in waiting on the Lord, it's also hoping. If there is hope, as they say, there is still life. If there is hope, there is still something that would make us live each day, knowing that God is going to shower us with His blessing. Wait on the Lord. So as we consider the four things that we have studied, meditated on in this chapter 40 of the book of Isaiah, the start of the consolation, the comfort chapters, that God is going to open up his plan to let his people know, I'm not going to banish you away. In my wrath, there is mercy. In my judgment, there is Jesus that I'm going to give you so that I would be a peace, so that all the problems about my justice will be solved. I will be the one to solve it for you. I will never consent sin, but I'm going to pour my judgment upon my son. I will make him to be sin for you so that I could look at you as God's righteousness because of him. But you have to wait on me. You have to trust on me. You have to hope that indeed the things that I have told you, I'll do it in your lifetime. God, it's okay if you're going to place me in the area of weakness, in the area where I'm helpless. I could not do anything because in the time when I am weak, then I could usher in your blessing upon my life, the blessing of strength and the blessing of grace. Somebody gave a very simple uh, illustration on this. The Word of God would tell us, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. Sometimes we are asking God, but there are some few things that we are holding on probably few centavos left of our strength. God was already pouring out thousands already of His blessing. I could not get it because my head is still closed. But when you open your mouth, nothing there. Why nagid gino? Why nagid? It's only the start of His blessing when we realize there is nothing left. Grace has just begun. Heavenly Father, we realize we can't do it. Thank you, Lord, that in 90 years, the very blessed truth that you are our everything, you are our strength, and you are nothing is being exemplified again through our experiences, through our lives, through the many of the people that we have known, and even to our lives that indeed you're our strength. You're the source of our grace. But you have challenged us to wait on you. Hoping and trusting the God who promised us that you're not going to leave us nor forsake us. Now, is there anyone, Lord, here that's weary, tired, 
Lord, nobody even could say right now that for 70 years, 70 years of pain and hurts and slavery, just like your people. But Lord, sometimes, Lord, even just a few days, a few months or a few years would seem to us like eternity. We could not see your face. We could not hear your voice comforting us. Oh, may your word would become mighty again in our lives today. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Lord, make your word real upon us. May we may see see you again in your beauty, in your majesty, in your strength, in your grace. That indeed in our experience, we could really say, God, you are true. Your word is true. We are standing strong. We are mounting the strength again in our wings and soar like eagles. Lord, it's only because you have promised us, you have loved us, you have called us into your family, you have given us the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear our prayers. Answer our longings. Fill our hearts. Renew us again, O Lord, even at this time. Lord, if you have invited anyone here, who is seeking for his personal relationship with your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. May, Lord, that indeed at this very moment, your Holy Spirit will work, knowing, Lord, that it's only because of your Son who took our sins upon himself that you could speak peaceably with us, you could offer pardon and forgiveness because of the blood of your Son. Thank you, Lord, for the salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Please continue to bow down your heads and close your eyes. I don't know if anybody have come this morning. You need Jesus. In the same way that we had been preaching here and giving this only hope, the Lord Jesus Christ, we are repeating it again 90 years later. Salvation is in Jesus alone. Will you come to him? He is offering forgiveness because of what he did on the cross. All we have to do is to ask for forgiveness of our sins, to place our trust in Jesus, accept him in our lives as our personal Lord and Savior. Would you do that this morning? Anyone? Would you raise your hand? Pastor, I think this is the time for me. The Lord is working in my life. I want to be saved. I accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. Is that your prayer? Anyone? I know that this invitation is not for everyone, but if you have come and you have this specific need, will you open your heart's door to the Lord Jesus Christ? Anyone? Would you please raise that hand? Heavenly Father, if this is a gathering of your people, Lord, what a wondrous testimony that we have. That through all the years, the only thing that made us continue on and survive is because of your strength, is because of your grace. Bless your word upon our hearts. But Lord, if there is someone here who needs the Lord Jesus Christ, may the Holy Spirit will continue to work in his or her life. Thank you, Lord, for this time together with your family, with your people, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.